Hi and welcome to my video. My name is Brian and on today's video I'm going to do part two of building a steel aquarium stand. I apologize the video and the sound are going to be a little bit out of synchronization because I had a malfunction while I was recording the sound was switched off on the microphone. So I've gone ahead and set the frame up on the floor and I'm welding inside because it's well lit, it's air conditioned and this is a good flat surface. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the uh, individual pieces and I'm using some magnetic 90 degree holders that will help keep things in position and hold them still while I tack it. The first step in the welding process is always to tack weld the components together and you only weld just a little bit because if you weld too much it will actually warp the metal as you weld it and it will cause all sorts of problems. So I'm going to go ahead and slip all of these in here and then the next step will be to make some tack welds. Okay, so that completes the setup for one side, and I like to only do one side at a time. Um, it just makes it a little easier to work with. You know, if you try to line everything up all at once, you can accidentally bump it, or you, you just wind up with alignment issues. So a quick note about safety. If you are welding, you should not allow others to be in the area unless they have proper eye protection. So I'm going to go ahead and put on my welding gloves and uh, go ahead and get started. So a tack weld is typically only about a quarter of an inch long or less and it's just to hold the pieces together. So again, the audio is not in sync with the video in this portion. And while you're watching this, in case you're curious, I'm using a Millermatic 211 and it features auto set where I simply dial in the size of the wire and the size of the material being welded and it figures out the parameters for me. It's pretty good about that. So my welder is mounted on a cart so that I can move it around as you see me doing here. And I am doing MIG which is a, shield, a gas shielded process in this particular case. I'm using a mix of argon and carbon dioxide in 2575 is the uh, proportions. And the gas serves to shield the weld so that the oxygen in the air that we breathe doesn't um, cause bubbles and defects or weaknesses in the weld. Okay, so that completes the tack welding for the first side. And now what I'll do is go ahead and uh, set up for the second side. And I originally thought this was going to be pretty straightforward, but it turns out that I run into an error here in just a few uh, minutes or seconds. So the second one goes on, no problem. And the third one looks like it goes on, but the third one's actually a problem. It's a, just a hair too long because the factory end is not cut properly. So you see I notice this here, and I start to try and... and align it and it actually pops out the other end. Uh oh. So um, what I decide to do is go ahead and move the third uh, stringer completely out and this is why we do a tack weld because if it had been fully welded it would be very very difficult to remove. Uh, it takes me a little bit longer because I, I need to first come to the conclusion that I that it's not just a mechanical mistake and that I can't get the the pieces to line up. All right, so no big deal. So I'm going to pull my magnet out of there, and then I'm going to pull that side back out a little bit so I can get access to it. And. 
and because it's only tack welded, I can easily lift it up and um, pull it out of there. So that's actually what I'm about to do. So uh, I guess I, I did not include that in the cut. So at this point, I've already, uh, you know, finished the, um, the, the pieces, and I've actually flipped the frame over, and I'm tack welding the back side. And while I'm doing the tack welding, the uh, piece is being trimmed so that the one end is square and a little bit shorter, so it'll actually fit properly. Once everything's been tack welded, I'll come back and do a finish weld. And you'll get to see that here. The, the total welding time is uh, maybe two or three hours at most. And as you can see, the tack welding goes really quickly. I wear coveralls so that I don't get sunburned and um, it also keeps the sparks off me. So I was having some trouble fitting this in and I thought, well, maybe I can just bang it and it'll, it'll fit. Yeah, that didn't work so well. So I went and I got my cordless DeWalt grinder and it's perfect for jobs like this. And if you want to know more about that, I have another video where I review the cordless grinder. So I've gone ahead and ground that off and I'm able to slide that in there and now what I'm going to do is go ahead and tack weld that in place and I, I should have paid more attention to getting it lined up because it's not completely lined up here and um, that'll come back to be a pain in the butt later. But honestly at this point I was starting to get tired and I just wanted this to be welded together so I could go home and eat dinner and be done with it. And my experience is usually when you start to get tired and want to just be done with it, that's the best time for you not to be working on something that requires precision. Okay, so I'm doing the uh, final bead, and you can see in the lower uh, part of the screen here, there's one that's completed, and then I'm working on the one on the other side. And I'll, I'll work my way down the whole frame and uh, then we regain sound here in just a minute. So, you know, this, this goes pretty quickly and uh, I'm not going to show all of the welds. main aquarium stand, I guess is what you'd call this. And the reason I've stood this up is so I can get in here and get into the corners properly. Well, this is all about the angle of the gun in relation to the belt that you're trying to make. Having the material and yourself positioned properly.
a lot of times this is all about position. So you've just got to angle yourself and angle your gun into the right position so you can get the weld in. So this is going to be a really uh, difficult weld because um, this is where I had partially cut the material and um, it's just going to really be a difficult weld because it's going to melt on me as I try to weld it. So now I am bridging a uh, almost a 3 8 inch gap, which is a really big weld. Uh, I'm just going to fill it in so critters don't crawl in here. Uh, I, you know, this is this is not a good situation, but it'll work. I think this is a good spot to stop for the night. I will uh, do part two, maybe tomorrow or the next night, where I uh, move this into position and actually weld the legs on it. Um, I can't weld the legs on it and then maneuver it into position because of the size. It's actually going to stand uh, 42 inches tall is the, where the base of the aquarium will be, so it makes it sort of in a tall aquarium stand. Thanks for watching part two, and I hope you enjoy it.